This is probably the best pan of my life. Best single pan I have ever done. And this is what I haven't seen. I can't see it all. I can't get it all out. So I'm putting it into a normal pan so I can see. <laughs> That's one pan. That is one pan. That's nuts. There's gold all the way down here. All the way up through. That is just nuts. Look at it. What's going on everyone? My name is Chris from Vogus Prospecting. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. And if you're an old moldy hat like I'm wearing, welcome back. Today, I've invited Mick out to use the high banker to slew some very rich gravels. When I high banked this spot the first time, only a few weeks ago, I wasn't sure how much gold I was going to get. When I did the clean up at home, I was like, right, high banking time. Grizzly, it's frosty, buddy. That's not frosty, that's a stick. I've got three potential spots that I could high bank today. Spot one, spot two, spot three. But I want to work out which one's going to be the best and most profitable, so we're going to use the pan and do some tests. Very, very small gold. I do not know how much of that you're actually going to be able to make out. There's probably 30 or 40 specs, but they are nano dots. Let's do spot two. That's better. Maybe around 50 or so bits of gold. So we'll check spot three. Grizzly just gave this pan the buff of approval, so I reckon this is where we're going to be sluicing. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is where we're sluicing. I can actually show you some gold this morning. We've got proper specs plus we've got about the same amount of micro in there as well. Mick, we've got to get the sluice set up over there. That one's not level. <laughs> Mix just putting in the first couple of shovels of the pay dirt. We've got a three sluice system because we know we're dealing with ultra, ultra fine gold. The main banker is going to catch most of it. And what we're hoping that these two are going to do is catch anything that's going to float over the surface from being overloaded, such as specimens or our ultra fine pieces of gold. <laughs> I'm under a little bit of pressure today because I told Mick that I'd be bringing him to the spot where he'd get lots of gold because with Corona and everything else that's gone on this year he hasn't had much luck so hopefully we can change that today hopefully <laughs> hey buddy, Grizzly, hey! <laughs> Hello. 
What I neglected to tell Mick was that this ground is incredibly difficult digging. The stuff down here, the, the gravel layer you can see, is where most of the gold is, and it's hard pack. To compound that factor, it's had old blackberries growing on it for a very long time, and reeds and all sorts of stuff. The roots have just bound it together. It's like digging in cement, so we've got to stop and loosen some dirt up before we can keep processing. Looking in the mat, I am seeing a lot of ironstone all through it, which is exactly what I got last time I was in this spot. And I'm going to be doing a cleanup video using the Magic Bit and spin-off tools, both of which I'm going to be giving away. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell in the bottom corner. I'm not splashing myself again. No, no. No, I don't do that, bro. I'm using the pointy, but it's too cold. Oh my god. I was like mental and then because when I walked away before there was a camera on there. Then I just tipped some dirt on there. I'm like, oh, there's no camera. That's up there now. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> This is the stuff we're chasing. You can see that nice orange color, really indicative of the high iron content that we've got in the soil. You can actually see all the ironstone just sticking out of it, heaps of it. And what it is, is incredibly sticky. So we get about an inch and a half to two inches worth of stuff that's got rock embedded in it. And underneath it, it goes smooth. All your gold gets trapped between those two layers. And so that's what we're really hunting because all your big bits are gonna be just sitting in this dense clay and all your nice little pickers and all your uh, normal nano specs will be sitting in the stuff with the rock. Now there's two questions I get asked all the time about clay, how to process it and is it worth digging? The short answer is this, you have to dig through a clay layer if possible to see if there's gravel underneath it, that's the first thing you should be doing, but clay itself usually isn't worth working unless it's got gravel embedded in it. If it's smooth clay, just take that layer that I showed you off and you should be fine, you should get most of your gold. Now, if there is gold in the clay, which happens sometimes, put it in a bucket, take it home, dry it out, crush it up, and then sluice it. That's the easiest way to do it. We're gonna actually take a test pan just out of this soil here. I wanna see what kind of specs we get in those layers. Same spec count. <laughs> Every time Mick and I high bank, I have to keep reminding him that not every rock has gold in it because this is his collection from about the last five shovels. <laughs> I can't let it go. You need more hands, Mick. <laughs> Don't spush yourself like I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This whole section here is literally conglomerate, so you get down to what you think is bedrock, and it's just big boulders cemented into small gravel. It's really annoying to dig in. We've got a big pick, finally got a real pick. Everyone keeps telling me to get, <laughs> which is making it a little bit easier, but not by much. And Arthur's come out to join us just to say, or well, in his words, to say that he came out on the creek. towards them reeds there's another little gap we're just taking a test pan we've come across a bedrock trench it literally comes in on a v and we're we're right down through the clay there's more gravel at the bottom so we want to know what's there to see if it's really worth chasing because it's hard work 
Oh, don't put your foot in. No, no, bro. No. <laughs> it's too deep. It's too deep. This is not swimming season. We're not the Canadian beaver. Not the beaver. Nah. Done? Yeah. So yeah. there's gold. But he is tiny. There's definitely more gold here. I mean, we can come in and there's lots more conglomerate to break up and we can go through this little bit and, and whatnot. But for the sake of time, because I have to leave in, I have to leave in about another two hours, we're going to switch to this side, which is the outside bend. And this is the second spot that I did the test pans this morning. This has a lot of very fine gold. So this should add up now that we've got the big mover. Have we named that pick? No. We have not yet. Now that we've got that, we'll be able to move a lot of this and hopefully the fine gold will add up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we can coordinate. <laughs> I got this. I got this. <laughs> hey, oh again. man, that's not, I can see it, you page. <laughs> I got it, but I... <laughs> oh, it's not. It's not that bad. I thought that was going to be worse. I'm not even dirty yet, Nick. <laughs> Mick and I have been working on this for the last 20 minutes or so and the grass and roots is incredibly difficult to dig through but once you get through it there's a layer of clay and broken bedrock and gravel and we pulled an unreal test pan from it. The sluice is looking pretty good. We've just stopped to break up some more of this before we keep processing. I literally have 30, no, 42 minutes left before I've got to go Mick so we've got to do some digging. Yeah! <laughs> That's a rock. Oh, it's just destroyed itself. Yeah. It's coming apart <laughs> at the seams. We've run a bit, and the pump's saying I'm out of juice. Now, even though we're out of juice, I've got this one shovel full pan from the very bottom, and we'll see what we get. Fully expecting it all to be very micro pieces on that side, but as soon as we hit that gravel layer in the bedrock, we pulled out nice pieces like that, plus all the micro that you may or may not be able to see down the bottom there. That is a fantastic result from one shovel full, but we got to know if the last four hours or so has been worth it. Oh, that's got tight. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of black sand in there. There's a lot of black sand. Every single mat is absolutely chock full of black sand and iron stone. This is why magnets are so handy in cleanups because it's a nightmare to deal with that much cleanups and the magnetics. We're not going to wash everything out here on the creek. What we're going to do is pack it all into a bucket, take it home and clean it up for you so we don't miss anything. But we will wash out the very top piece of miner's moss up there because that usually holds a little bit of gold. And we want to wash this one out separately just to see how much fine gold made it to the very end. Did you say your pick's called toe jam? Is now. <laughs> I'm using mixed blue pan simply because of the contrast. The gold in the last mat is usually pretty fine and very hard to see when it's on the silver bataya. So this just gives you a good visual representation of what's going on. 
And we're not we're not gonna take it down too far. We just just want to reveal what is in here. Not that much, man. Hardly any fine gold. The bottom mat only caught that gold there. Now it has to be said that obviously that little sluice was not as wide as the other two so we were losing a percentage of gold straight back into the creek and that's fine like every sluice everything always loses gold you can't help it all you can do is minimize your losses i aim for a 95 percent recovery rate at 95 percent you're usually doing pretty well we've done the test at the end of this sluice looking at that i'm guessing we're probably running a 95 percent plus recovery rate i'm going to wash that top piece of miner's moss out next let's not put these faults in the <laughs> in the bucket like I did last time. <laughs> in the bucket. So this is just that top piece of miner's moss and it's not properly cleaned out that moss. You've really got to bang them. If they've got the back to them, you've got to be very, very aggressive with how you clean them out. Otherwise things will get stuck. It's easier if you wait till it dries out and then shake it. And when you're doing cleanups in the creek, obviously you can have a container underwater. That helps. But if you don't, just take it from the very front edge and continuously re-stratify. Oh, Mick. <laughs> uh, yeah. We did okay out of that top piece of mat. We did okay. Oh, wow, nice. That's just that top bit not shaken out properly. <laughs> Our fine, the fine gold that's going to be caught in the main mat is going to be oh, some good bits is going to add a lot more to that. They're nice coarse pieces. They're not that nano micro stuff I normally mine. We are all packed up and ready to go. So I've got to try and make it across the New South Wales border. And the next time that you see me and Mick, we'll be with scales ready to weigh this stuff. Well, it's Friday night. We have beers and we have cleanup. It's going to be a little bit hard to see between the light and um, and the muddy water, but there it is loaded with gold up in these top cells. That's the first stripping run done. We're going to turn it off, find out what we've got in the mat. <laughs> that cell's full. That cell's actually full of gold. It's not the only one. <laughs> no, it's like, look at that. It's everywhere. That's, that's legitimately full of gold. All our hard work's in this. It's heavy. It's actually heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could show you Mick's face right now. I've seen more eyes out of Mick than I've ever seen. Holy <laughs> crap. That's, that's pretty good. Um, wow. Right before we jump into this video, I wanted to let you know that this is sponsored by me. I am giving away a brand new Gold Monster 1000 metal detector and it is completely free to join and get in on. All the information you need is in the description below. Please read all of it. There's some important stuff and pieces that I've included in there to answer some of the most common questions I've been getting about this competition. But for now, let's jump straight in and weigh this mother load of gold. This is all the gold we got for our little high banking session next to an Australian 5 cent coin and a Clash Guitars pick for a little scale. I've received some emails telling me that some people's husbands are getting rather excited about the paintbrush over the gold and I do apologise for that because I'm not going to stop. Now the experience I've gained over the last few years would tell me that this is sitting in around the two gram mark. I don't know exactly how much. You should let me know what you think in the comments below. But the only way we're going to know for sure is to take this and put it in the scales. Point oh nine grams in today's value is one hundred and seventy three dollars and ninety one cents. 
That means that Mick and I were on $21 an hour for those four hours each. And that means we were making the minimum Australian wage. And I can already hear that some of you are asking who may be joining this channel for the first time, well, you know, that's a lot of hard work for not a lot of reward. But we don't do it for that. We're micro miners, hobbyists, enthusiasts. And as enthusiasts, we're out there for the adventure. It's a big kid's treasure hunt after all, but it's a big kid's treasure hunt that occasionally gives you cash back. And sometimes it gives you cash back that's worth more than what you originally invested into it, which is exactly what happened on this day. So I strongly urge, don't get so caught up in about making money with gold. More importantly, chase the adventure, chase the fun, and you'll have memories and experiences that are absolutely priceless. All the while, digging up a little bit of coin for a future thing that you want to buy or a trip that you want to go on. So that concludes the end of our adventure. I hope you did enjoy it. If you like this one, chances are you'll like a lot of the other videos that I have up on my channel. I have over 350 films on gold prospecting, metal detecting, magnet fishing, and treasure hunting in general. Don't forget to check out the description where I've got the giveaway for the Gold Monster 1000. That's right, we are giving away a Gold Monster 1000 completely free to someone anywhere in the world on the 1st of September. And until next time, please give your dog a scratch behind the ears for me. Hit that like, share, dislike, or even subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future adventures. Peace, and I'm out. Oh, look at that. That's, that's actually breaking. That, that's, it's, there's gold right through the center of a, of a piece of host rock.